Hey you guys, it's Peter, and welcome to my channel, Peterisms, where I tell stories of my life and just little things I've learned as I have grown into the person that I am today. And it feels so good to be back in this chair. I just got back from um, a trip to LA, and I took yesterday off, and I was just like relaxing and things like that. So I was like looking through the book, I was thinking to myself, I have so many meditations that I could possibly do on here, and all of them from like the last five days are so fantastic. So I'm really excited about filming this today. I'm actually going to go back to February 3rd, and the meditation is called Rejecting Shame, and it is from the language of letting go. And um, thank you guys for being patient with me for not posting videos for a couple days. On this channel, I really like to have videos pre-filmed before I go on vacation or before I go away for a day or two, but I just didn't get the time to do that, and um, I was like, you know what? You need to give yourself a break. You need to stop feeling guilty about these things and just enjoy the journey and, that, and that's what I did and I had a great time so but I'm back and I'm very excited to be you know sitting here reading meditations and telling stories again so thank you guys for being patient all right today we are going to read rejecting shame um, from February 3rd shame can be a powerful force in our life it is the trademark of dysfunctional families authentic legitimate guilt is the feeling or thought that what we did is not okay it indicates that our behavior needs to be corrected or altered or an amend needs to be made. Shame is an overwhelming negative sense that who we are isn't okay. Shame is a no-win situation. We can change our behaviors, but we can't change who we are. Shame can pr propel us deeper into self-defeating and sometimes self-destructive behaviors. What are the things that can cause us to feel shame? We may feel ashamed when we have a problem or someone we love has a problem. We may feel ashamed for making mistakes or for succeeding. We may feel, sh uh, feel ashamed about certain feelings or thoughts. We may feel ashamed when we have fun, feel good, or are vulnerable enough to show ourselves to others. Some of us feel ashamed just for being. A shame is a spell others put onto us to control us, to keep us playing our part in a dysfunctional systems. It is a spell many of us have learned to put, uh, put, to put on ourselves. Learning to reject shame can change the quality of our life. It's okay to be who you are. We are good enough. Our feelings are okay. Our past is okay. It's okay to have problems, make mistakes, and struggle to find our path. It's okay to be human and cherish our humanness. Accepting ourselves is the first step towards recovery. Letting go of shame about who we are is the next important step. Today, I will watch for signs that I have fallen into shame's trap. If I get hooked into shame, I will get myself out by accepting myself and affirming that it's okay to be who I am. And I think that's such a fantastic meditation. You know, when I was in early sobriety, one of the things that I would hear from people all the time is that this is not a program of shame or blame. And what that means is that it's not a program where we like are pointing our fingers and blaming other people for the, what's happened in our lives. And it's also not a program of shame where, you know, like getting healthy, where we feel bad about the things that have happened in our past. And acceptance, if you really use acceptance as a tool, is looking at everything that's happened in our lives and realizing, okay, I may not understand today why this has happened, but it happened for a reason, you know? I think this kind of like self-deprecating shame, which I have felt many times in my life, you know? I, to this day, when I make a mistake or when I screw up, I just feel this like overwhelming amount of shame. And when I talk to my sponsor or when I talk to my friend or, you know, somebody about that or my husband, and it's like, I don't necessarily feel that way anymore because they give me an outside perspective of how to look at that situation, you know, and that not necessarily is it a situation that I need to feel ashamed from, you know? The other thing is, is that as I go through this journey of life that is never ending learning, you know, it's like I always talk about it being a school, you know, we learn a lesson, gradu we graduate to the next level, but we never really graduate from the school. And the thing about that is this, is that you know, I'm a believer that, and I heard this recently, and I loved how it was said, but I've always believed this, that you can't really learn to get up unless you first fall down. And it's like, you don't, mistakes happen in our life. We, we are human. We make mistakes and we screw up, right? It's the resistance to learn the lesson that the true mistake is in. If something happens and we accept that and we do inventory in our lives, whether it's just in our head or talking out loud or reading a self-help book or whatever we're doing or processing it with another person, you know, when we look at those behaviors and we say, okay, this is who I was at that moment, I don't necessarily want to be that person anymore. I don't like what that represented at that time. What can I learn from that? How, how can I be a better person today, you know? And then it, the lesson is from the mistake. So if you look at it that way, mistakes must occur. We must, 
you know, make mistakes in our lives and screw up. We have to, or we will never grow. And there is no such thing as a perfect person out there. There just isn't, right? So when we're sitting there and we're like comparing ourselves to other per people, you know, and it's like, oh, they got this or they got that. But like most people have learned from their mistakes. I know I have, you know, and it can be as simple as like, you know, when you think about it from like a logistical point of view, not necessarily, I'm trying to think of like something funny that's happened in my life where, um, you know, I'm like, you know, okay, it's like popping popcorn in the microwave. <laughs> you know, you put the bag in the popcorn, in the microwave, right? And let's say it says like, I don't know, between like, you know, two and four minutes and you put it at four minutes and you burn all the popcorn, right? Well, what do you learn next time? To put it on not as many minutes and to stand in front of the microwave and listen to it as the last pop comes on, right? But like, let's say the second time that you do it, you know, you put it at three minutes and you stand there and it's like, you still like burn a lot of the popcorn because you weren't standing there listening to the last. So the next time you stand there, you're like, okay, I'm gonna really listen to it. As soon as it stops popping, then I'm gonna take the, the popcorn out of the microwave, right? So it may take us a couple tries to really get it, you know? And from Dr. Shree Scott's book, Life is a Game, These are, If Life Were a Game, These Are the Rules, she says in there that lessons are repeated until they are learned. And I love that, right? But it's damaging too, because if you don't get the lesson, what it says is that it will be there, it will repeat itself for you in your life in a different form for you to learn, you know, from. There is like this poem and it's like a recovery poem or a treatment poem. I don't know where it comes from, but um, we used to have it on this piece of paper when I worked in treatment back in the day. And it was like a lesson that we would do. And it said on there, like, it's like a poem in, in, a poem in five stanzas or something like that. I can't remember how it's called, but it's like a man walks down a street okay and, and falls into a hole that's like chapter one chapter two is a man walks down a street sees a hole falls into it chapter three man walks down a street sees a hole i gotta make sure i get this right man walks down the street sees the hole steps over it falls into it man walks down the street sees the hole walks around it uh, chapter four or chapter five man walks down a different street i mean that's kind of how life is right like we have to learn over time that what we're doing isn't working and maybe like these things that we've done we could be better people if we would accept the lesson but a lot of us don't want to accept the lesson right away you know even when it's right in front of our face saying hello i'm a lesson listen i'm a lesson i'm your teacher and teachers come in many forms you know i was talking about this on my vlog the other night my teachers don't always come to me in the kindest way, you know? They're not always the people that I want to be teaching me lessons, you know? And in life, I have to remember that. Lessons come in many forms and many ways, and I have to be accepting to the lesson, not necessarily the way that it's been, you know, provided to me, and that's just how the world works. I like to find the meaning in things, you know? I don't want to live a life of shame. I, I don't believe that shame and guilt are emotions that do any good for us whatsoever, you know? And, um in a couple meditations down the road because I've already read all of them it talks about guilt in there a lot and guilt and shame are you know they're kind of like sister brother emotions and you know what's interesting about guilt is that guilt is really about taking responsibility often for things that we don't really have a whole lot of control over and I remember you know like my mom and I having this conversation and she would say things to me like well like after we had both gotten sober she would say if I hadn't been drinking around you when I was younger if I hadn't done this if I had done this if your dad and I had done that and I said, what's going on here? Like, she goes, well, I just think like if these things hadn't happened, then maybe you wouldn't have ended up. And this is as she was in recovery. Like she understood addiction and recovery, right? And I, one day, we had had that conversation many times, but one day I said to her, I said, you know, mom, I said, you know, you really like, give me, you know, accolades on like how much I've grown as a person or how I'm a better person today than I would be had I not gone through what I was, but or what I went through by you saying those things, that's you taking responsibility over my growth. Like that's not fair, right? Like I need to take responsibility of my own mistakes so that I also am able to down the road on my successes and my self-worth and my growth. Like that's only fair, right? But that's where like guilt has to work in different ways and shame is pointless, you know? And I think that shame is something that's also taught to us over time. You know, when I was talking in here about dysfunctional families, it's interesting because I think like depending on what kind of family you grew up in, you know, like, um, you know, I know I have lots of friends of mine that really to this day, like struggle with feeling immense shame over very small things. And I'm like, you know, why do you feel that way? I, 
why do you feel that way? I don't get it, you know? And when I look at their family and I look at the systems of their family and they talk about their family and the things that their mother said to them. And, you know, it, my mom kind of talked a little bit about this with her mom, you know, that like sh they came, my mom and my aunt came from a very critical family. And so there was always like what you could do to better yourself, what you weren't doing that was good enough. And, um, you know, like I didn't receive that as much from my mom. I did in some ways. Like I would walk down to go to school and she'd say, you're not going to wear that, are you? Like she would say that to me. Like she loved my friends being different and weird and individuals. But like if it was me, she was very protective of that. My aunt was very hard on my cousin like when she was growing up, you know, and like all about like, you know, all kinds of issues. And, you know, you look at that and it's like instilled shame that we have in us. And you have to let go of that with love. Shame is a pointless emotion. If anybody can explain to me why shame and guilt is achieving anything in their lives, then I will think differently about that and think that it's a really great emotion and it does us a lot of good. But until then, and nobody's ever been able to prove that to me, I just don't believe it. I just don't believe that guilt and shame do us any good. You know, I would rather learn from those feelings and those emotions and accept myself and say, you know what? Life is too short. It's not a dress rehearsal. I'm not going to continue to feel ashamed about myself or feel, for, feel guilty about things that have happened. And honestly, guilt about things we've done in our past is a resistance to move forward as well as a resistance to learn the lesson. I want to learn the lesson today. I want to be a better person. I, if mistakes are going to happen in my life, if I'm going to screw up, if I'm going to fall down, damn it, I'm going to get back up and I'm going to learn from the mistake and I'm going to be a better person because that's what life is all about. It's not a dress rehearsal. I love you guys and I will see you tomorrow. Bye.